Um, it's quite interesting. I, I think when there are difficult economic times, people tend to um, still support charities, but their charitable giving changes. Um, people tend to focus more on local um, causes and also on in international development causes. Um, so actually for Devonair Ambulance Trust, um, it's not been as bad as you, as you might imagine, um, because obviously we are a very local cause. Um, we're also a very universal cause. Um, everybody in Devon might benefit from the service or know somebody who might benefit from the service. So um, we've managed to maintain um, our income um, throughout the recession, um, thanks to the support of local people. Um, I, th I think any leadership role obviously has challenges um, because obviously communication is, is absolutely critical. Um, per firstly, within the organisation, uh, making sure that everybody, um, all our staff um, and all our volunteers know and understand where we're going and what our plans are mm -hmm. um, and also understand the sort of really key policy issues um, that, that, we, um, that we face. Um, and so my job is very much about making sure that, that, that the, you know, those key messages are um, uh, understood by everybody and communicated effectively. Uh, that's obviously, you know, that's always a, a difficulty in any organisation. Um, but when you're talking about an organisation which, um, you know, covers the whole of an area the size of Devon, um, and we, you know, we have 12 shops, um, we've got 20 people here in, in the office, um, we've then got just short of 400 volunteers all around the county. Um, so it's actually really quite difficult to actually get the same message out to all of those people um, yeah. at the same time. So that's, that's, I think, probably the biggest challenge um, in terms of communication. Well, you do a good job. Thank you. <laughs> um, do or? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, every charity um, is required to have a policy on reserves. Um, Every charity, I, I'm, I'm quite sure, aims to generate more income than it needs in any given year in order to build up mm. some reserves. We have a reserve fund. Um, we aim to have sufficient reserves in hand that aren't already committed. So, for example, already committed to you know, purchasing an aircraft, for example, um, to, to meet the running costs of the organisation should we... Uh, in any one year have a sort of 20% drop in charitable income. Um, so we make sure that we've got that money in, in the bank as it were to fall back on um, against that sort of provision. Um, happily, so far we haven't seen um, you know, anywhere near a, a sort of 20% reduction in income. In fact, okay. last year um, things actually were, were better than the year before. And increasing. Mm. Okay. So there is a safety net in place. There is a safety case. net in place and it's absolutely crucial obviously when we're talking such big figures mm. that, that you know, we have a reasonable safety net in place and we do set that out in our annual accounts. Okay. We're saying you know, this is the amount of money we need to have in that pot um, yeah. and at the moment we've, we've got that pot okay. under there. Yeah, I, I think obviously what, what's absolutely critical, as I said earlier, is, is communication. Um, I talked a bit about internal communications, but obviously external communications are, are what keep us going because um, if, as, as long as people understand the importance of what we do um, and the benefits um, and the fact that we are there for everybody and anybody um, in the community, then um, hopefully they'll continue to support us. So any um, relationship which actually raises the profile of the charity um, and um, promotes it to a possible new audience is, is a benefit to the charity um, because we just never know why somebody might choose to support us. But um, you know, if they don't know about us, they're not going to choose us, are they? So that, that's absolutely vital. Those sorts of partnerships are really important.